سنة الناكن In the name of God, most gracious, the most merciful. Mr. Vice President, I do enjoy coming late because it presents a challenge where I have to find a whole new angle to a debate that I think our side and the independents prosecuted quite well. But this one was particularly low-lying fruit to be honest. <coughs> when I listened to that opening by the Minister of Finance, and as Tony Cozier would have said, I rather pain and pain than tortured knock. In 45 minutes, he made one run. And that point was that we didn't go to the external markets because of external fluctuations, so we went to the local mar market. But I would say to him, what you have done is expose the citizens to increase debt by going to any market, because you have not explained how you're going to pay it back. <coughs> so I'll take a page out of his book and say, enough about what he said. There's nothing more to be said. As usual, the Minister of Finance took us down many roads, as we've said. None of them went and pointed to the motion. As a matter of fact, when I saw the the tail enders that came after the, the Minister of Finance, and they were, to be honest, tail enders, none of them of any quality. Um, and I'll, I'll go to the first one in, in that button lineup, um, which, was, which was sad. And I will not repeat what Senator Dutchman Dial said, but I, I was shocked by listening to her motion, I thought maybe when she was coming inside, someone gave her the paper, the motion, and the motion was that we brought a no confidence motion in the Minister of Finance, because that is what she spoke about, how brilliant the Minister of Finance was and what he did. But she never once addressed anything to do with the motion. What the money was for, what the money will do, why we borrowing, not one thing she said. All the, minister, uh, the Senator Laurel Lizama Lee Singh talked about was how brilliant the Minister of Finance was, and he did a great job in COVID, and chalala, chalala. So I do not know why, as someone said, they didn't bother to at least, at least, at least the Minister of Road, um, Works and Transport, at least he tried at least to, to address the motion, albeit putting the government in tremendous embarrassment. Because he, he talked about what they intend to do after the minister himself stated that they didn't know what they wanted to do. So I, I am thinking, what if I went to Mr. Naked, deceased? I said, Pop, I want a $20,000 $20, loan. My father asked me, OK, but. Why you want that loan? And I tell him, I know, you know. <laughs> Just give me a loan. <laughs> it will be David Naked deceased. Because anything could come in his mind. Why his son, mature, university graduate, just come and ask for a $20,000 loan, and I have no logic, no reason, no rhyme, no rhythm, as to why I want a loan for $20,000. They come in for 10, I'll try and make it song, the narrative like the Minister of Finance, and not make it song as, as hard as it would song. Why we come to about $10,000 million, $10 billion, and they have no reason, they have not given one reason behind why they want to do it. And I am asking myself, after nine years, has this government become so smug, so overconfident, so assured of their power and position, that they feel they don't have to account to us? They feel they don't have to account to the people of Trinidad and Tobago as to why they would want to borrow $10 billion? 
that the Minister of Finance, who we have stated before, and he's, a, he's a colleague of my brother, and I know him as an intelligent man, but yet he comes here with no intelligent argument as to why we should give him $10 billion. It's all about what the United National Congress did between 2010 and 2015. That is the only thing they came up with. That is the only thing. But after nine years, the people of Chiang Tobago are fed up, are fed up with the same arguments, the same tired, bored narrative. Mr. Vice President, people are dying in the streets of Chiang Tobago. And that is because of inconsistent, incompetent, poor developmental policies by this PNM government. You cannot hide it. You're not talking about one term, three years or four. You're talking about nine years, going into 10 years. And you all can't even come and make a cogent, coherent argument as to why you want $10 billion. And yet still, you have the audacity. Somebody, I heard one on their side, I think it was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, he called this bench here a motley coup. Misfit. But we have a Minister of Foreign Affairs, a medical doctor. We have a Minister of Finance, who's an engineer. We have a Minister, we have an Attorney General, who's a stranger to the truth. A no taker. And I could go on and on. We have some people on that side who can't put two sentences together properly. And the most one thing for me today is the mystery has been solved. Senator Alan Roberts always asking where that half a million dollars went for someone's education. But now I know where it went. It went down the drain. <laughs> it went down the drain. Poor argument. Not only poor, no empathy. And that is what's sad about this, you know. Listen. She get half a million, but people can get a little milk. A little milk. If, after nine years, you come to the Senate, and you know you're coming up, as the Minister of Finance said, expecting a, a battle, expecting a fight. And you can't even account for ten dollars of ten billion dollars. I feel sorry for the Minister of Works and Transport. I could imagine what I waited him in Bali's house. But he died in the hell of good. I can I could imagine what I waited him. I I, cause I, I'm confused. I am a legislator waiting because they always say we non cooperative. So I'm waiting to hear argument, I swear to God, and it's the month of Ramadan, a fasting. I'm waiting to hear something that I could give them some kind of credibility, you know, some kind of credit with. Nothing. Anybody who tell me they heard anything from that side that gives them any credit with this particular motion, I'd have to say, is, is going to be untruthful. It was embarrassing today. I mean, this is a government that has failed, but today was a really poor day for the government. A really poor day. Shocking. And you know, before I, get in, before I get into my angle on what is development, because we heard a lot of things about the oil and gas and oil and gas. And, you know what? You know, let me help them. Let me, let me help them. No, let me help them. You would think, with our decline in the oil and gas, you know, it wouldn't be a brain surgeon to say, well, you know what? Let me come and fool the people one more time, as the PNM are accustomed to. Let me tell the people, the Senate, well, we have in our developmental plans, plans that have, you know, nothing, energy related, not related to fossil fuels, for example. Let's have some wind energy, solar energy, we're gonna have investment in that. They, they can't come up to that. A serious intellectual deficiency on that side. But I would be thinking that if they, as they would like to say, oil and ga gas going down, all our resources being depleted, 
We couldn't find something, so we had to go to Dragon. We had to go to Venezuela. We had to go all over the place. Didn't the, didn't the Minister of Energy and Energy Affairs boast about that? He's traveling everywhere. Again, claims and plaudits <laughs> all over the globe. You understand? He got in so, much, so, many, so much claims and, and plaudits that a long standing servant of this country for 61 years who entered, who entered his profession at the age of 18 as a post office boy, a postal clerk. And I relate to that, a postal clerk. You know, because people here in Tanana, they see, they see a, white, a so called white trend begonian. They like to think, you know, they just have a silver spoon. He went into his profession at 18 years old, worked himself from the ground up, finally had enough of this government, and spoke his reality. This government has failed us. And what did the Minister of Energy and Energy Affairs lambast the man under parliamentary privilege? Lambast him. Talking too much, he had a big mouth, he opened his mouth, he was getting fired. You know why I relate to that? You know why I relate to that, Mr. Vice President? I myself, I am two generations away from, my, from peddling with textile on my back trying to sell the people in China and Tobago. Because when my great grandfather came over, that's what probably he would have done. Coming from Lebanon, that's what Lebanese used to do pedal. Textile on the, on the back, sleeping under somebody's gallery when they go too far, they can't get back home. <laughs> Likewise, many of our people here. Maybe Senator Lachmidial or Sen Senator Timal, two or three generations away from being in dental labor. We have taught their histories, all of us. So we have one of our people, loyal citizen. Rise rose, rose by his bootstraps. And all this government could do, lambast him, criticize him, buff him up. So the question asks, where the, the, the Minister of Energy and Energy Affairs, he feel he dropped out of the, the, the movie The Lost Emperor. <laughs> he was part of the, the elite dynasty. No, he, he, he two generations away from making pow. Who knows? There's a reality. You can't come and lambast a citizen for speaking his mind. I don't care if he's white, black, yellow, Chinese. I don't care. But you have to respect that, and that's what this government doesn't do. They do they, first of all, they do not understand development. And I, that brings me to my point. My point. Development is not only about infrastructure. At that, they have failed, admittedly. Nothing works in the country. That has been stated or not go over it. Nothing works. Everything has gone wrong in every industry you can imagine. We are the least in sports. We don't produce top athletes anymore in anything. One or two, one or two and we celebrate them. They do, because that is the only thing. Before we were champions of the Caribbean, in football, champion in Caribbean in cricket, running, all kind of, everybody has gone past us. Netball. Netball, everybody has gone past us. They want to tell us about healthcare. We have the worst healthcare that you can imagine for resources we have. They cannot deny, they can say what they want. I was part of a JSC with Senator Paul Richard. We did that. We saw the kind of healthcare we had with people waiting two years for a screening. They can, they, can, they, can, they can tell untruths to the public, but they cannot tell untruths to us who know. Education, we have the most school fights that you can find probably per capita. Every day is a school fight. And not just school fights, horrific scenes. Horrific scenes. Where is that anger and frustration coming from? And that's where I get into. Where is it coming from? Just out of tenure, like they want people to believe. They want to come and blame the church, blame the mosque, blame the mandir, blame the parents. So what are we paying them for? What are we paying them for? Part of governance is to make sure that social and economic policies are in place 
to ensure the happiness of the citizenry. And that is where I come to in terms of development. Development is not only about infrastructure and building this, it's about what we call the happiness index. You know where we are? In a 2021 study, we're in the bottom 10, 144 in terms of happiness. You know, is the percentage of people who don't trust this government? 70% of the people. And that's in 2021. If you take that now, it could be, might be more. I don't know. But I only talk the truth. I don't talk about what I don't know. 70%. In that same report, and I have it right here. That same report talk about the social inequity. They say they have luxurious places, and right next to them, shanty towns. Who has perpetuated, who has perpetuated that? The UNC, MSJ, whoever, whatever name you want to call, they have 52 years in government. They are primarily responsible, as they have said, for the development of the country. Well, you have failed, <laughs> miserably. And now they want 10 million to feel more. The report goes on. Frequent outages of internet, electricity, and water restrain productivity and anger citizens. You remember you're talking about the happiness index? Happiness is a part of development because it relates to mental health. Traffic alone. So when the member for Digo Martin must come and ball up everybody. And tell them, don't go and do your nails, go and do that. It's a, it shows a disconnect with the people of Chiantel. You know what it is when a poor woman could go and do her nails, hand and feet? You know how she feels? You know a, a youth from the hood, when he go and take a haircut, nice it up, fade it back, how he feels? You know what I'm talking about, brother? It's a whole new lease on life. I'm telling you, just that little thing. You don't know what that could do to him. But they can't understand that. They can't understand that. And it's a pity, I feel sorry. Because the Minister of Finance, I know him as an intelligent man. But they have no more any connection with the ground. So the, the Honorable Prime Minister could come and harp on that. Don't do this. Pay this. Pay that. Don't go to the beach. You know how many marriages are saved? How many domestic abuse situations are saved when that man could take his family to the beach every Sunday? Or at least one Sunday every two weeks or one Sunday? You know what that could do to the mental health? That is part of development. What have they done? If the country then, I haven't stated all that I've stated to you. If the country then is in such an angry state, and hear what? I don't want to get into personal situations, which I never do. But I hear somebody refer to my honorable colleague here and her statement about if the devil bring it, it's God who send it. <laughs> and he tried to say, for some reason, that that statement is somehow diabolical. That's somebody, that's somebody who shows no understanding of what God needs. Because, listen. The devil cannot do anything except by permission of God. Those of us who know who God is understand that. God is omnipotent, and even the devil, the devil, he must take the permission of God to do anything. And that is what that statement means. So I'll say to that gentleman who made that statement, I'll give him, a, I'll give him something that I used to hear in my house all the time. I grew up in a house, you know, one of them houses when mother and father, they have a, a, a rhyme, a poet, a poem for everything. That was my house. Hamlet, King Claudius, Chief Minister, Polonius, this is years going back here. Polonius, speaking to his son on his way to university, he was telling his son about how he should behave and all that. This is years going back. This is Mary's literature. He said to him, to thine own self be true. Above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day. I know, you know, I know you know it. Thou canst not be false to any man. 
I said to that person, and also two women. So don't come and talk about this, the quote by Senator John, when you're not true to yourself. Come out of that closet, come out. Be truthful. They went on to say, young people with college degrees cannot find stable employment. So all the talk we hear about full employment. When we know, listen, it's something else to lie to people who are so busy trying to put food on the table. And that is the situation we have in Trinidad and Tobago. And that is the situation I said about this government, they want to perpetuate. You know why? When you're so busy putting food on the table, you ain't have a, a chance to really read through the lines and see what they're about. But one and a half did that. It's a man who went through 61 years and obviously clearly had had enough. He said we have to hold this government accountable for our taxpaying dollars. That's what he said. For me, that was extraordinary because people of that ilk, normally they don't speak. They don't speak, but now they're starting to speak because they've realized how diabolical, how dastardly this government has been in a disservice to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. This is a, this is a government, Mr. Mr. Vice President, where the statistics clearly do not lie. If you have gone down in almost everything, if not everything, what are you going to come to us here and tell us that you've developed the country? Based on what? You're going to come to us here and tell us you want $10 billion. Based on what? I don't worry about paying it back if we can develop the country. If you can put situations where people don't need to just feel they have to go into another community with people who look like them going through the same socioeconomic circumstances that they are going through and just riddle up the place. People are not mad. Poor people are not necessarily innately mad or insane. But they just feel they had to take guns and go and just shoot up people. No. And we as a government, well, we certainly as the government that will come into power and try to fix this wrong that they have done, we certainly feel that even though you target surgically the offenders, you must create a holistic situation where people don't feel as somebody says, it's easier to get that gun than to get a job. And we're talking about meaningful employment. Not the employment that only caters to who finances that side. It cannot be like that anymore. We are fed up. Because I'll tell you why, Mr. Vice President. I had the unfortunate desire, because I guess it's how I how I was brought up. I had the unfortunate desire. I wish I didn't go. For one time, I wish I had taken a more cowardly approach to it and did not go. But something compelled me to go to her place. I had to go. So I went down. Amidst immense protestations from the family, here and outside, I went down. You know, and there's no politics. I wish the representative of that constituency had gone down or anybody on that side to see the faces of the people in her place. I went in there before they put up all the barricades and they put up that after. I went in there. If you saw the, the confounded, confused, bewildered looks like. You know, because we always feel that these people, they don't feel pain like we do. Eh? We always feel that. Because if five of some upscale neighborhood had get shut down, uh, oh gosh, oh gosh, this place will be rocking. But five are my people. 
And I say my people. Because my mother does a stone show up in Picton, grew up. I grew up right there. Five of my people here shoot down. And not one person from that side went down there just to look at that community in their face. Because they would have loved it. You know why? They're not UNC. They don't vote for us. They vote for them. You don't think they would have loved to see one of them come there? Busy, they're too rich. But they send statement. Member for Digo Martin West. They send our next statement. Member for Maloney, where do you want to go reach? Aruka Maloney sent a statement. Minister of Energy, Energy Affairs, the direct representative sent a statement. Not the decency, not the humanity, not the love. What is our government supposed to do? Run around the world talking about things that they want to do and will do? Negotiations is not policy. I try to talk about that here. One off events, one day events is not policy. That is Mama Guy, Mama Gizam. They have plenty of that. Ministry of, Minister of Sport, same. To be fair, I agree with Senator Richards in a way. The, the, the Minister of Tourism, he tries. He tries, but we know. Hands tied. Hands tied. <laughs> one boat. One boat. All right. And him sticking now, you know, one boat. And you know, Mr. Vice President, although we might find some jocularity in their incompetence. <laughs> it remains a stark reality that we're in a very bad place in Trinidad and Tobago right now. If we could treat our most vulnerable, which is clearly places like Hart Place, Shafford Court, Scorpion, Big Yard, if we could treat those people, give them the wealth, and don't, don't get tapped, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, with the government, and the government fine is half a trillion dollars, and in the nine years they have spent. You telling me they can one community, but let me tell you why, and this is a selfish concern. They don't realize, and this is, a, I want you all to look at this. And maybe you all might understand. Look at it well. You have your people here. You have the people at her, her place here. The more that you contribute to the middle here, you raise here. That is economic logic. Look, look, at, look, 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 look. I want you all to look good. The more you have those at the high end, contribute properly here, and that is you all, with policies that will lift here. I'm not saying directly, you know your, government, you know your prime minister said, uh, the rich get richer and the poor could, could the poor could what? They could trickle down. They could trickle down. No, I said contribute to the middle. So you see those 6,000 small and medium enterprises you all close up? If you all had help them, contribute there. They then in turn employ here. So you all contribute here, live here. And in the end, all you all do is make yourself safer. So it's a selfish interest. Maybe that might work. Maybe that might be of interest to you all. But I want you all to understand that model. If you all want, I could put it on a blackboard for you all. <laughs> Them don't pass examines. So Mr. Vice President, this happiness index that nobody really touched on. I repeat, where we are 144th in the world, in the bottom 10, because of all the things that I outlined, no developmental policies, no proper resourcing of those communities that will, in the end, make us feel safer as a country. Because we have good people in this country on the high end, eh? don't feel like blazing them. You know? We have good people there who want to see those people here 
reach there in the middle. They want to see that. But now this government has taken a role of, of bully. You talk out a place, you have nothing to get. All you have to get is public obliteration. We'll embarrass you. We'll insult you. And who, who, who's doing that? Somebody who, this, who the, the Express describe as undistinguished. <laughs> you know what undistinguished mean? It means mediocre. That's diplomatic. Less than average. That's a nice way to describe it. Achievement, nothing. Zero in achievement. Yeah. And you there, all, all you could do is try your best to insult citizens concerned about the welfare of this country. And he's on the high end, eh? Mr. Harford, I would assume after 61 years in banking, is on the high end. So if you, you silence their voices, I want you all to look at this. I want you all to look at this. If you silence their voices, who's going to speak for them? Who's going to raise them to the middle? And that's what you're being paid for. Hey, you're being paid for that. Taxpayers' money. Allowing you all to sit on here like allowing us to sit on here. But it's in your hands, your job. Minister of Finance. You have a slightly higher intelligence than the rest of the people around here. Come on, help your team, as we say in football and cricket. Help your team. It was a poor effort today. Poor, poor effort today. So, Mr. Vice President, I leave you with this. If you have a government that in nine years and half a trillion dollars develop no new income streams, no new income streams, and their only income stream is to invade the accounts of taxpayers. What does that tell you? Give them an next 10 billion? that we have to pay for in the end, our children have to pay for? Their only income stream in nine years is the tax. Mm -hmm. I'm, borrow. I'm, borrow. I'm, borrow. I'm borrow. I'm going to the borrow, and I'm going to that, because that's something deferred. That's kicking it down the road. I'm talking about the immediate effect. Their only solution is the tax. And we're waiting for all when they come down. <laughs> waiting for all <laughs> So if after, and I go back to governance, whether it be on a national level or corporate governance, or even governance of a team, a club, is the same. If after, as owner of a team, I give you my coach, my director, $10 million. And after the end of the year, you win two games and lost 22. And you come for me the next year, and you want the next $10 million. You tell me, Mr. Vice President, where you tell me? You might tell me what the Prime Minister tell Selwyn Kajo. <laughs> True? Very you might tell me that. I'll give you $10 million. They come in now after half a trillion dollars. Nothing to show for it. Not even nothing to show for it. Forget that. I'll give them a blight. I feel sorry for the Minister of Finance. He let himself down and they let him down. Nothing, nothing to show for it. They can't tell you what they want to do with it. <laughs> oh, God. And asking us and telling us we are unpatriotic because we're not agreeing to that <laughs> foolishness. Senator, you have five more minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Boy, never in a million years will agree to that. You all are incompetent.
Bull face. And as the young people say, like, oh, they thirsty, well, they want $10 million as well. <laughs> <laughs> to do what with? An election? <laughs> I won't talk about the election. I don't talk about the election. I don't, I don't talk about election. No, I don't talk about election. I, I ain't studying that. But at least, show me one community where I grew up playing football. I make this point again, Mr. Vice President. Show me one community that you all have represented. Not after eight, as Senator Julian John said. After 52 years, direct representation. Show me one community you all have improved. You cannot. You are failures as a party with your policies and your programs. You know why? The ethos is not about people. It's not about people. Your ethos is a wrong stain in power. And we know that 10 billion is just a guarantee that you try and stay in power. But I think the people have had enough. They've had enough. So Mr. Vice President, in closing, I urge all the senators, at least on this side, some of the independents, if they care to listen, Our job is to the people of Chance. And I go back to Mr. Nakit, God rest his soul. You can't come to me and ask me for a loan. You don't know what you, what you want it for. You can't tell me what you do with what I gave you before. <laughs> and you know how you're paying it back. You know how you're paying it back to me. I'll leave it with my father, will I tell him? Go on, scratch. Thank you, Mr. Vice President.